All right, so this video finds me on page 15 in your notes with applications of similar triangles. While you're getting that out, I want to give a quick shout out to Billy and Chase and Grace and Elon and Leah and Sophia. Miss all you guys. Wazi and the other Billy and Isabel and Sorrel. Can't wait to get back together in the classroom when we can see all you in person. But until then, just wanted to make sure I said hi, thinking about you guys every single day and hoping that this finds you in good health and your families are in good spirits and that everybody's doing as well as they can be doing considering the circumstances. All right, so now to the part that I know you're anxious about, the geometry. So again, I'm on page 15 in your packets with applications of similar triangles. This is one of my favorite topics in the unit because it really talks about how can I use my knowledge of similar triangles in order to solve some problems that are in the real world around me. So let's get down to business. It says that a surveyor, in order to find the distance across a pond from point B to C, the surveyor is going to draw the picture that they show you in the diagram. And the measurements that he makes are indicated on this diagram. They want us to use the surveyor's information and measurements and in order to determine the distance from point B to point C. And they want us to round our answer to the nearest yard. So if I think about what it is that they're looking for me to find, they want me to find this distance from point B to point C. I am therefore going to label in my picture X. And while we're in the diagram, or while we're in the picture, I'm hoping that you're seeing two triangles. The first of which is going to be that large pink triangle. The second of which is going to be that smaller blue triangle. And I happen to notice that each of these triangles has a right angle. In addition to each of those triangles having a right angle, they also share this angle down here at A that I just colored in light blue. So what that means is that these two triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity. And because they're similar by angle-angle similarity, the sides have to be proportional. As I did in the previous video on page 14, I'm going to take these two triangles and I'm going to separate them from one another because one of them sits on top of the other. I find this a really helpful and useful strategy. So I've got the blue one, and I've got the pink one. Both of these have a right angle up at the top, so I think I'm going to go back and I'm going to erase my triangles and draw these a little bit better. There's my blue one. And there's my pink one. And again, each of these have those right angles that I'm going to make right up at the top. And they have the congruent angles over here in the bottom left-hand corner. So again, two congruent angles means triangles are similar. The right side of the blue triangle from the picture is 120 yards. The right side of the pink triangle is what we're trying to find, so I called that X. The bottom side of the blue triangle is 230 yards. And notice that the bottom side of the pink triangle is made up of two smaller pieces, one of which is 230 yards, the other of which is 85 yards. So that makes the bottom side of the pink triangle 315 yards in total. And now that I've got my triangles drawn, now I'm all set up to go ahead and set up my proportion. I'm going to do, as I almost always do, small over large. But you can set up the proportion any way you'd like as long as you're consistent. So I'm going to do 120, which is the right side of the blue triangle, over the right side of the larger pink triangle equals 230, the bottom side of the blue triangle, 
over its corresponding side in the pink triangle, 315. And now that I've got my proportion set up, I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. So in other words, 230x, when I cross multiply, I find that number is 37,800. You should not take my word for it, though. You should get your calculator out and multiply. I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 230. So x is equal to 164 and a whole bunch of nice-looking decimals. According to the directions, we want to round this to the nearest yard. So when I round this to the nearest yard, I find that that distance is 164 yards. And again, x did represent the distance from point B to C, so I'm done. So hopefully you can see from that example right there how the surveyor could find that distance across the pond, which would be really difficult to lay down some kind of a tape measure and actually find it a distance there because of the pond. All right, let's go ahead and let's take a look at another one. In the next example, it says a support wire for a telephone pole is attached to the pole and anchored to a stake in the ground 15 feet away from the base of the telephone pole. Jamal puts a six-foot wooden pole under the support wire that's parallel to the telephone pole such that one end of the pole is on the ground and the top of the pole is touching the support wire. He measures the distance between the bottom of the pole and the stake in the ground to be three feet. Jamal says he can approximate how high the support wire attaches to the telephone pole by using similar triangles. Explain why the triangles are similar, and then approximate the height of the telephone pole. So this question, I think, is a little tricky, not because of the math, but because of all of the reading that goes along for the math, or with the math. So first things first, it says the support wire for the telephone pole is attached to the pole and anchored to a stake on the ground. So in other words, that yellow piece is our support wire. And the place where it's anchored is 15 feet away from the base of the telephone pole. So in other words, this distance all along the bottom on the ground here is going to be 15 feet. Then it goes on to say that Jamal places a six-foot wooden pole under the support wire in parallel to the telephone pole. So in other words, if this is our telephone pole, this is our pole, our support pole that Jamal's putting in there. And that support pole is six feet tall. such that one end of the pole is on the ground and the top of the pole is touching the support wire. So here's your end of the pole that's on the ground. Here's your end of the pole that's touching the support wire. Jamal then goes and measures the distance between the bottom of the pole and the stake in the ground to be three feet. So again, here's the bottom of that support pole. Here's the stake in the ground. That distance is three feet. Jamal says he can approximate how high the support wire attaches to the telephone pole by using similar triangles. So here's where the support wire attaches to the top of the telephone pole. He wants to find that height right there. So if we think about Jamal's situation in terms of triangles, here's what we've got going on. We've got the large blue triangle, 
and we've got the smaller triangle that I'm going to make orange. I can see in the picture that they share that purple angle by the reflexive property. And since we always put telephone poles in the ground at right angles, and regular poles in the ground at right angles, those angles are always going to stand perpendicular to the ground and make right angles. So that's kind of an important key idea to know here is that all of our objects are going to stand straight up and be perpendicular to the ground. In other words, make right angles. So if I take a look at these two triangles, again, I've got the large blue one with the right angle in the uh, bottom left corner and this purple angle over here in the right corner. And then I've got this littler orange triangle which also has the right angle and the purple angle. These two triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity. And therefore, the sides are proportional. So again, I'm going to do the large triangle over the small triangle and go set up a proportion. So if I look at my large triangle, which is blue, I've got x for the length of the left side. I've got 15 feet for the length of the bottom. And in my orange triangle now, I've got 6 feet for the length of the left side and 3 feet for the length of the bottom. So my proportion is going to look like, and I think I'm going to go back and I'm going to do this small over large because that's what I've been doing all along. I could do large over small as long as I did the same thing for each ratio, but I like comparing the small to the large. So I'm going to compare 6 to its corresponding side in the larger triangle, which is x, is equal to 3 over 15. And once I set up my proportion, I'm all set to go ahead and cross multiply. So 3 times x going in one direction equals 6 times 15 going in the other. Or in other words, 3x is equal to 90 and x is equal to 30. So to answer the question, explain why the triangles are similar. Well, we did that. And the height of the telephone pole, we let be x. And we've done that. As always, folks, can't thank you enough for tuning in. And again, I hope this finds you and your families all doing well. Till we meet again, either by video or in person, stay safe, stay healthy. Keep on keeping on. Miss you.